Hi and welcome to Produce for Kids, FoodRx. FoodRx is here to provide you information to empower you and your family to make healthy choices together. I'm your host, Julie Harrington. I am a registered dietitian and a chef. And today we're gonna be talking about what exactly is a plant-based diet. So the term plant-based is used pretty frequently, but also can be defined differently depending who you talk to. So there's no wrong answer to what plant-based means. You need to identify what it means to you. Plant-based diet could easily be 100% plants, or a plant-based diet could mean the focus is on plant foods, but also incorporate some of those animal products, but in a smaller portion. So the whole goal for any plant-based diet is to include more plants. The Harvard School of Public Health developed the Healthy Eating Plate. Take a look here and try to identify what percentage of this plate is focused on plants. If you said 50%, you're close. 50% is making up your fruit and vegetables, half the plate, but also your whole grains count. So 75% of this plate is focused on our plant-based foods. Also, this plate could be 100% plant-based if you are choosing plant-based proteins. So really, the goal for a plant-based diet is making at least half your plate focusing on those plants. So the whole goal is to increase our plant intake. And those plants are including our fruits, our vegetables, our whole grains, our nuts, our seeds, our plant-based proteins, just to name a few. So the definition of a plant-based diet can be trimmed down and defined a little bit more and divided into these different subgroups. So some of the subgroups include vegan diet, where the diet is 100% plant-based. Then there's different terms for vegetarian. It's not just plain and simple. You might be an ovo-lacto-vegetarian where you do include eggs and dairy, but also following mainly a plant-based diet. Or it can be a lacto-vegetarian where you do include dairy products within a plant-based diet. Or you can be an ovo-vegetarian where you do include eggs into a plant-based diet. One term that can be actually used to encompass just the general idea of a plant-based diet is a flexitarian. So a flexitarian means the main focus is on our plants, but it does include the animal products in smaller amounts. But again, it's more of a plant-forward diet. It's really important to be mindful what type of plant-based diet is going to work best for you. You could have ethical reasons, environmental reasons, or even health reasons to follow a more strict plant-based diet. But be sure to not necessarily put labels on yourself. It's okay to include some of the animal products if that's going to be the best for your health and your lifestyle. So why is it important to consume our plants? So our plants are made up of our fruits, our vegetables, our whole grains, our nuts and our seeds, our legumes, and they're all containing fiber. Fiber helps our gut stay nice and healthy. It keeps, keeps us staying full, and it also can help reduce the risk of diabetes and high cholesterol. Not only does fiber come in our plants, but also all these antioxidants. When we think about plants, we're gonna think about colors. Each color means a different antioxidant. Antioxidants are gonna help reduce inflammation. Prolonged inflammation can cause different disease risks. So including more plants into your diet is going to be important for all life stages. So how are we gonna incorporate more plants into our diet? It doesn't have to be hard. Start with the 50-50 approach. If you typically are cooking normally, what are some ways we can think about adding in more vegetables versus limiting, focusing on what we're limiting? So it could be simply as starting mixing veggies in your burgers. If you're having a turkey burger or a beef burger, by adding those finely chopped mushrooms, zucchini, spinach, all of those are gonna stretch out your meat, so stretch out your dollar, but then also add some moisture and juiciness to your burger, plus you're incorporating more plants. So it's a win-win all around. Also for snacking, you definitely want to incorporate some more plants there. Something like carrot sticks is a quick and simple kind of snack, but for me, I want something to dunk. So 
we're thinking about sustainable snacks as well. What's gonna provide you the most energy? So carrots paired with our chickpeas, our hummus, is going to be more of a long lasting snack. Same thing goes for our apple and peanut butter. This is one of my favorite snacks. I pretty much eat this every day. So the apple alone is a great choice, but now you're gonna add some more staying power by adding peanut butter along with your apple. If you're used to eating pasta, there are some fun ways to incorporate more plants there. You could puree some vegetables into your tomato sauce that you're putting on. You could saute some vegetables and add it right on top. Mix, again, some vegetables into your meatballs. But then you can also include it directly from your pasta. This pasta is made from red lentils. So right there, you're getting a plant-based protein in the form of pasta. When we're thinking about plant-based foods too, you also want to include your plant-based proteins. So this can include our beans, our lentils, our nuts, our seeds, edamame. All of those are going to be really great choices. So thanks for tuning in to Food RX. I'm your host, Julie Harrington, and you can find more information at produceforkids.com slash foodrx. See you next time.